Welcome to Electro Online. Here we have another very interesting problem from the JEE Advanced Test. It's a test in physics and mechanics specifically, and it deals with potential and kinetic energy. So let's read it together. Two identical uniform disks roll without slipping on two different surfaces, AB and CD, starting at A and C with linear speeds V1 and V2, respectively, and always remain in contact with the surfaces. If they reach B and D with the same linear speed and V1 is 3 meters per second, then what is V2 in N meters per second, N being somewhere between 1 and 9, and we're going to take G equals 10 meters per second squared to make the equations come out a little bit simpler since we don't have a calculator. You're not allowed calculators on this test, so we have to do our best here. So notice that the object 2 doesn't have to drop as far as object 1. So the speed of object 2 should be greater than the speed of object 1 if they're both going to end up here with the same end speed. That makes sense. So you can see that n cannot be 1, 2, or 3. It should be at least 4 or more. So if you have to guess, now it's down to just numbers between 4 and 9 instead of 1 and 3 included. So what we can say is that at the very end, they should have the same final energy. So energy final of the first object must equal energy final of the second object because we're told that they will be moving at the same linear speed when they get down there and they're the same object, same mass, same shape, same everything. Which means that the energy initial of the first object must equal energy initial of the second object because the initial energy must equal the final energy since there's no energy lost. So what we need to do now is identify what their initial energies are and then equate those to each other. So, initial energy of 1, that's going to be kinetic energy, translational initial, and you know what, I'll just go ahead and write down the equations, because after all, this is a test and we're trying to save time, right? So we have kinetic energy initial, which is 1 half mv1 initial squared, uh, plus the rotational kinetic energy, which is 1 half I omega initial squared, and this is for the first object, so omega 1, plus the potential energy that would be plus mgh initial for the first object, and that equals, that would be the 1 half mv2 initial squared plus uh, 1 half I omega 2 initial squared plus mgh two initial there we go all right okay so all we have to do now is plug in what those things are um, first i think we also want to translate i omega into mv so let's do that for a solid disk i is equal to one half m r squared and omega is equal to v over r so that means that one half I omega squared is equal to one half times uh, one half, because there's twice one half, so it would be one half m r squared times v squared over r squared. I'm kind of running out of room there, but notice that the r squares cancel out, and so the rotational kinetic energy, one half I omega squared, can be, can be changed into the linear kinetic energy to be one quarter mv squared. So you can see that we can then change these two, one quarter mv squared to get rid of the i and the omega. So let's put that in here. So we have one half m v1 initial squared plus one quarter m v1 initial squared plus the potential energy which is mgh1 initial is equal to one half mv2 initial squared plus one quarter mv2 initial squared plus mgh2 initial. Let me put a line there. So wow, that's a terrible looking line. Let me try that again. We'll put a over here. And there we go. Okay, so now we have the initial kinetic energy of the first object in terms of the linear kinetic energy rotational kinetic energy, initial potential energy, again, linear kinetic energy, rotational kinetic energy, and initial potential energy. Now realizing that all of them include the number m, or the, the constant m, 
And since they all have the same mass, we can get rid of the M. And then I think I want to get rid of all the fractions. So let's multiply everything by 4 to get rid of fractions. So we get 2V initial for the first object squared plus V1 initial squared plus GH1 initial is equal to, that would be 1, uh, no, I'm multiplying times 4. So times 4. And you know what? So we don't forget. So we don't forget what I just did. Let's go ahead and multiply both sides by 4. <laughs> that way we don't make silly mistakes like I just did, forgetting the 4 right there. And so this is equal to 2 times v2 initial squared plus 1 times v2 initial squared plus 4 times g h2 initial. All right, now we can combine these two. We can combine those two. Remember, we're looking for v2 initial. That's what we're looking for, v2 initial. And uh, so let's go ahead and add these together. This is 3 times v1 initial squared plus 4 g h1 initial is equal to 3 v2 initial squared plus 4 g h2 initial. And now I think we're ready to plug in the numbers to make things simpler. We know that v1 initial is 3, so that would be 3 squared times 3. That would be, well, I'll go ahead and do the substitution. So plus 4 times g, which is 10 times h1 initial, which is 30, is equal to 3 v2 initial squared plus 4 times 10 times 27, because the height is less for the second one. All right, so now we'll multiply everything out and move all the numbers to one side. So this is 9 times 3 is 27, plus 300, that's 1,200. And then we'll bring this across, minus... 40 times 27, so that would be, uh, well, 40 times 30 minus 10 percent. That would be 1,200 minus 120, that would be 1,080, is equal to 3 times v2 initial squared. Subtracting these two is 120. Essentially, you can take a look at this. This is 40 times 30 and 40 times 27, so essentially it's four times, 40 times 3, which is 120. That's the difference between these two. So 27 plus 120 equals 3v2 initial squared. And these together is 147 equals 3v2 initial squared. Dividing both sides by 3, we get 49 equals v2 initial squared. So v2 initial equals 7 meters per second. And therefore, looking at the equation, n equals 7 which is indeed the correct answer for this problem. So recapping, the whole idea is to realize that they both have the same speed when they finish. If they have the same speed, they have the same energy. They have the same final energy when they finish. That means they must have the same initial energy when they start. So this is the initial strategy. And that initial energy is in terms of the translational kinetic energy, rotational kinetic energy, and initial potential energy you do the same for the other object, then you realize that you can convert the rotational kinetic energy into translational kinetic energy. That means you can add those two together and also you can get rid of all the m's. The m's no longer matter because you have the same m on both sides. Combining these two, plug in the numbers, then look for the only variable left that you don't know which is what we're looking for. And that is how it's done. How long should that take? <laughs> Yes, but I went a little slower because I had to explain it. Uh, See, going, <laughs> if you do this and you're just concentrating, you should be able to crank this out in about five minutes or so. <laughs> Again, so here's the key, right? So these are difficult tests. You don't get any sheets with any formulas on it, so you have to remember all the formulas just like that. You have to very quickly come up with a strategy. That's the key. If you can't come up with a strategy, you're kind of stuck. And you have to remember how to convert between translational and rotational kinetic energy. Uh, if you have all that memorized and you come up with the strategy, then it yeah, should take you about three to five minutes to solve this problem.